Hi everybody, I'm teacher Marianne and today's project is called Artful Array and we'll be learning how overlapping objects can create a sense of depth in a drawing and how to make interesting compositions. For this project we are inspired by a painting by Shannon Celia called Rakes and Breaks from an exhibit called Santa Paula Sojourn. Okay, let's get started. Go around your house and collect items. Find things that are interesting for you. Make sure you have items of different sizes. You're going to want some things that are big, some really small things, and some objects that are medium size. Notice how small the push pin is compared to the coffee cup or the wood spoon. The whiteout and the tape are medium sized objects. I found objects from my kitchen, my desk, and I found a few odd toys in a junk drawer. So look all over the place, you never know where you'll find things. Gather more objects than you need, so you'll have more options when you're putting your composition together. So let's get started on a composition. A composition is the way we organize our objects on our paper or an artwork. We want to make our objects in a circular type of layout. That will keep the viewer's eye on the artwork and not wander off the page. So look at the scissors. They point, the points are facing out and our eyes always follow the pointy things and our eye will wander right off of the page. So I put a circular object there and that'll make our eye come back into the artwork and not go off the page. And I just slowly continue adding items on my page, not sure if they're going to work or not. You're just having fun, trying different things. See how they look. If you don't like them, move them around. Maybe you chose an object that you're not really liking, so get rid of it. I decided not to use the spoon or the big paper clip as well as the scissors. So I'm adjusting things and deciding where things should go. Um, the paper clip was kind of going towards the corner so I moved it up and down. Put the Lego on top of it and I want it to overlap. It's going to be actually on top of the cup when we draw it. So then I thought, huh, maybe the circular motion's a little better there. and then put that on to overlapping the, um, the other object. And at last I put my tiny little push pin in so I have a lot of contrast. So now I'm going to look at my composition. Does it work? Is it flowing in a circular motion? I'm happy with it. I have a large object, a teeny tiny one, and I have some medium sized objects. So we're set. Now we're ready to draw our composition. Now we want to draw our objects, placing them in the same position the way we did when we laid them out on the table. Remember we are overlapping, so I'm going to start with the object that was on the very bottom of my composition, and that was the wood spoon. Tracing is a great way to draw your objects. Hold the item down tightly so it does not move. Keep your pencil straight up and down and draw around the object. Make sure the pencil always touches the object as you trace it. Try not to press too hard. Try to keep your lines very light. Look what happens when I press harder and try to erase it. The line doesn't really go away. Pressing lightly is difficult though. So don't worry if you're having a hard time and it still comes out dark. It really takes a lot of practice to learn to draw lightly. Some objects will need to have some detail added to them after you've traced it. Here you can see I added the label to the whiteout. And the label has a lot of letters, but I don't care about the letters, so I chose not to add them. You also need to erase the lines from the bottom object when it shows through the top object. Slowly continue to add your objects, making sure they're overlapping something else. Mm -hmm. 
Some items I find difficult to trace, so I draw them freehand. Don't worry if it doesn't come out looking exactly like the, the object, just do the best you can and have fun. After everything is traced, make sure the lines under the objects are erased. By doing this, your objects will show depth, like the Rakes and Breaks painting. Now that we have the drawing completed, let's color in our shapes. You get to choose the color that you want. Don't worry about what color the object is. It's your drawing, you're the artist, you get to choose the colors. If you look closely, I'm coloring in all one direction. It does not matter which direction you start in, just make sure you keep coloring in the same direction. Here's an example of coloring the wrong way. It looks messy compared to coloring all the same direction. Sometimes it takes a little practice, but once you get it, it'll come naturally later. Once you color it all in, then you get to outline it with a black marker. For students who want more advanced drawing tips, do not outline and watch the video titled Extra Tips. Have fun coloring and can't wait to see your finished projects. Let's try adding shadows and shadings to our drawing. Use a black pencil. Where you see the shadows, add black on top of your color. This will give the objects more depth or look more three-dimensional. Color lightly to build up the shadow. Notice how I'm pressing lightly and just keep going over it and over it to build up the color for the shadow. Shadows are darker, closer to the object. See if you can make the shadow lighter as it comes away from the object. This takes a lot of practice, so no worries if your shadow is all one color.
adding texture to your object will also help give it depth. My wooden spoon has wood lines in it and a small shadow. I'll use black for the shadow and a darker brown for the wood texture. If you only have one brown, just try pressing the brown harder and it'll make it um, look like the lines in the wood. Because you made shadows, no need to outline your objects in black. Have fun.